Hello, BookTube. Terribly sorry, in the onslaught of videos, I forgot about our daily mail haul. So I'm afraid I've burned through most of the day's mail, but I have, we have three packages here uh, from the second swing around from the, the U.S. mail truck. So we'll go through those, and that'll keep the video nice and small anyway, which we probably want after a million videos from me. Uh, so let's, let's see what the first one is. This is your fifth mail haul of the week. Uh, oh, okay, great. Uh, this is a finished copy of Nicola Griffith's So Lucky. Finished paperback. All new releases should be this. Nice textured cover. Gripping uh, artwork. No reason at all for any new book to come out in a dust jacket and hardcover. If you want it, order it. But this should be what appears in stores. Imagine how many more books you'd get at the bookstore. How much further your money would go. Uh, this is great. She wrote the, the, the uh, big, wonderful historical novel, Hild. Uh, and this is... Uh, a completely different thing. <laughs> a completely different. We actually ran a review of this uh, on Open Letters. Uh, and this is a, a, about a, a thoroughly successful woman who suddenly has her life stripped away from her. Basically, every single element of her life, including her physical health. Uh, and it's an examination of that. I, I uh, actually didn't know this was going to come out in just a paperback. I'm, I'm grateful, though. I'm happy about it. Great. All right. Uh, all right. So that's number one. A finished copy of something that uh, we've already got. We've already seen it. We've already reviewed it. Uh, and then this next one. Okay. This is by Oren Harmon. This is Evolutions: Fifteen Myths That Explain Our World. Uh, Hmm. Uh, so this is about uh, humans place the awe-inspiring achievements of modern science, the cutting-edge insight into fields of evolutionary biology and cosmology, in direct dialogue with a long and rich tradition of world mythology. Reframing them in the language of style and myth, Harmon presents lyrical, searching, and scientifically sound narratives about the Big Bang, the formation of our solar system, the development of multicellular organisms, and the biological evolution of vision and flight, posing important and timely questions about the roles and limits of science along the way. By bringing science and myth in conversation with each other, Harmon reveals mythology as a tool of investigation and science as a mode of storytelling, both meant to plumb the depths of the unknown and help explain our world. Okay. All right. There's a big difference, though. Uh, I mean, I'll, we'll see what this author does, but there's a huge difference between those two things. <laughs> because by mythology, you, of course, mean religion. And the, the huge difference between the way that religion tries to help us explain our world and the way that science does is that past a certain point, and that point happens very quickly, you're not allowed to question religion's explanations, much less test them. On pain of death... <laughs> Which is not exactly the way it works in science. So they, 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 they might share in the broadest possible description an approach to helping humans explain their world, but it's all about methodology. You, you can't... Uh, no scientist... Well, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, so who is, who is Oren Harmon? From the beginning of his career, he has been fascinated by the intersection of science and the humanities. Born in Jerusalem, he studied biology and history at Hebrew University, received his Ph.D. in History of Science at Oxford, and now chairs the program in Science, Technology, and Society at Bar-Ilan University in Tel Aviv. His second book, The Price of Altruism, was a biography of George Price, a little-remembered American scientist who devised an equation to explain altruism. With evolutions, he continues this investigation into the interchange between science and the humanities. Okay. Fantastic. All right. This comes out in the middle of June, so I should get to it right away. I should get to it this weekend. Uh, the only... I've read many books like this, of course. The only uh, besetting problem that I usually have with them is that they give way too much ground to religion. Because I don't know... What, this, these persistent mentions of mythology notwithstanding, this, is, this book is about reconciling science and religion. And 
usually in books of this kind, we'll see what this author does. Sounds like he's well credentialed. Usually in books of this kind, the author can only square that circle by giving huge amounts of ground to religion that it doesn't warrant. Uh, and just hoping that that a kind of appeasement produces peace. So we'll see. We'll see if this book is. We'll see what the, the approach this book takes, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll do the last one here. Oh God, <laughs> him again. <laughs> this is. Uh, oh goodness gracious! <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, this is due right away. This is due in early June. Goodness gracious! Uh, these are these are things I really should get to. I should probably do them this weekend. This is by Corey Taylor, and it is How Hitler Was Made. And you can see where the subtitle is. <laughs> uh, Germany and the Rise of the Perfect Nazi. Uh, hmm. well, that's an interesting way of phrasing it, isn't it? I don't know what you'd call. Would you call Hitler the perfect Nazi? Surely Heydrich would be the perfect Nazi. The Nazis weren't just an ideology. They were also a race and a visual appearance. Hitler was a, a slope-shouldered little schlub, and he was Austrian. Surely, surely, Heydrich would. Well, I don't know. What, I, this is. I, I know what they mean. The most ideologically pure in terms of frothing at the mouth. <laughs> but uh, but I, I don't know that I want to show you this face. It's kind of a gripping cover. Uh, but uh, well, anyway, if I have to suffer through it, you have to suffer through it. So this comes out in early June. And I have to get to this right away. I'm not going to let this book go by. Uh, how did an obscure agitator on the political fringes of early 20th century Germany rise to become the supreme leader of the Third Reich? I can tell you how. I can tell you the first step how. Because voters in the 16 election thought, this guy is a joke. No one's going to take him seriously. No one will ever vote him into power. And who cares what his base thinks? They're so small. They're such a tiny part of the country. Unlike many other books that track Adolf Hitler's career after 1933, this book focuses on his formative period immediately following World War I. The author, a veteran producer of historical documentaries, brings to life this era of political unrest and violent conflict when forces on both, si on both the left and the right were engaged in a desperate power struggle. Among the competing groups was a highly sophisticated network of ethnic chauvinists that discovered Hitler and groomed him into the leader he became. Okay, that's that's fascinating. Puppeteers. That's... Live free or die, baby. The book also underscores the importance of a post-war socialist revolution in Bavaria, led by earnest reformers, some of whom were Jewish. Right-wing extremists skewed this brief experiment in democracy, followed by Soviet-style communism, as evidence of a Jewish Bolshevik plot. Along with the pernicious stab-in-the-back myth, which misdirected blame for Germany's defeat, in World War I, that is, uh, onto civilian politicians, public opinion was primed for Hitler to use his political cunning and oratorical powers to effectively blame Jews and communists for all of Germany's problems. Okay, that got better as it went along. That, that's fascinating. Uh, okay, good. Based on our archival research in Germany, England, and the U.S. and interviews with experts, I, I'm now really curious to read this. I, luckily, I'm right in time to read it. June's right around the corner. Um, and let's see. Corey Taylor is a primetime Emmy Award-winning filmmaker with 25 years of experience in documentaries who began his career with National Geographic Television. And he's done a ton of documentaries. I'm kind of curious to know if this is his first book. I don't know if this is going to tell me. Oh, well. Uh, all right. Well, I won't, I won't hold up his face any longer for you. So, all right. So this comes out in early June. Sounds like it might be a Rise of Hitler book slightly different than the 8,000 Rise of Hitler books that I have read in my life, which would be an amazing feat in its own. Uh, so... There we go. So that is Mail Hall number five of the week. This is How Hitler Was Made, Evolutions by Oren Harmon, and So Lucky, and a beautiful finished trade paperback. Uh, and there we go. I, I'm going to add these way up there to the top of the pile, uh, and I'm that's it. I'm not going to do any more videos today, so you'll be free of this face until tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.